last year could have been the only chance that Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown ever get to win an NBA championship. Yo, 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 what is everybody? Welcome back to another episode of NBA Now. It's your boy Dom, and we're going to get right into things here today. So, today, 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 we are talking about the Boston Celtics. Um, obviously, we watched this team just take a trip to the NBA Finals, in which they did end up losing to Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors. Um, but this is a team that showed a lot of promise last year, had a big turnaround midseason to put themselves in a position in which they were able to go on pretty much a historic, not only turnaround, but run throughout the playoffs, beating multiple all-time greats in the likes of Kevin Durant. And yes, I'm going to throw Giannis into that equation um, to get their way to the NBA Finals and inevitably um, lose, as I said before. But yeah, this team is very interesting. What we're kind of going to be looking at today is what should we expect from them next year? Obviously, there's been trade rumors about Jalen Brown and Kevin Durant and all sorts of stuff throughout the offseason. They're very intriguing to think about. Um, but for the most part, those have kind of been broken down. If you guys haven't seen um, that stuff that has, you know, come out and stuff like that. Um, but there are plenty of reactions to that. And so... I'll give my two cents on it quickly, but it's not going to be super in-depth. I think it would be smart for the Celtics to do it. Um, you have a better championship window for the three years. You have Kevin Durant than, what, the eight that you potentially have Jalen Brown. That's my quick two cents on it. We're going to move past that, though. We're going to look at the actual roster that this team is going to have next year. And this team did make moves. Like, don't get me wrong. Obviously, we're talking about them potentially trading for Kevin Durant there. But they were not out here sleeping and just looking at the top-end talent. They were out here filling out their roster, bringing in guys to fill some of the needs that they have on this roster um, to try and, you know, not stay stagnant, as we've seen some teams do in the past. Obviously, we saw um, the likes of the Atlanta Hawks go to the Western Conference Finals um and then come back the next year with pretty much the exact same team and end up being the eight seed and having a disappointing early exit in the playoffs right um we saw a very similar thing with the phoenix suns they stayed stagnant they kept their team around they thought that what they did where they got to the nba finals was good enough um and what happened they almost lost in the first round to the new orleans pelicans and they inevitably did not make it back to the nba finals in which they had hoped so in fact they kind of crumbled um in the playoffs one could say but yeah i think staying stagnant in the nba is one of the worst things that you can do so the fact that the celtics went out and yeah they they did haven't and didn't trade for kevin Durant at this point um but trying to continue to improve this roster is the best thing you can do the nba is just a big wild game of chess between um hundreds of people with you know all-time great athletes trying to all compete for just one trophy right it's the craziest game of chess in the world <laughs> if you want to put it that way and it's ongoing and everlasting and ever more difficult right as more young players enter the league more um guys have breakout seasons more guys that become aging veterans and aging stars continue to stay good in the league like we've seen lebron do till he is almost 40 at this point and still playing as one of the best players in all of basketball um, and so it continues to get harder and harder for every team to get themselves to the NBA Finals and potentially win one. And obviously the Boston Celtics want to repeat and expand on the success of last year. So they brought in a guy like Malcolm Brogdon to fill one of the biggest holes on the team in playmaking. Now, I think um, based on a lot of reports, we're going to see him coming off the bench for this team. Although I think he definitely, definitely should start for this team. Um, he's a guy that's decent defensively, a little bit overrated on that end. He's had 50, 40, 90 he's had, had a 50 40 90 season before um now that was a while ago back when he played with Giannis on the Milwaukee Bucks before he ever went to Indiana and obviously prior to um going to the Celtics but he's definitely a guy that I think provides spacing he provides playmaking he's almost made an all-star team when he was in Indiana um and so he's definitely a guy that they got for like pennies on the dollar for what I think he um should have been worth and is definitely a huge add to this team I think he's an upgrade in the likes of like a Derek White or something like that and he can actually run this team um I think he's gonna provide a great um obviously playmaking ability but like you're gonna stagger Tatum's and Brown's minutes and stuff like that but like you're also gonna have Malcolm Brogdon out there who's an all-star caliber player 
um, and a good playmaker in his own right, pretty much whenever you have one of those two guys off the court, Malcolm Brogdon will be in the game. Um, which is perfect for this team because it's going to continue to keep them being able to score no matter what personnel they have on the court. Um, they also brought in Danilo Gallinari, um, which is a good pickup as a shooter and a veteran in the locker room. Now, come playoff time, how much of him we'll really see, how much of a potential aging Al Horford will really see, um, that's up for debate. But this team really has like seven or eight guys that they can go deep with into the playoffs, and um, they improved on that, right? They, you know, made a Peyton Pritchard into a um malcolm brogdon now they do still have peyton pritchard but for my i guess analysis right there is you just went from having to have peyton pritchard on the court to being able to have um malcolm brogdon on the court and essentially really just didn't give up much other than um naismith who has just been a disappointment at this point in his career now yeah he could potentially turn it around um all it takes is one season for him to kind of get going obviously being a shooter and everything like that um if he just figures it out i mean he'll have it you know what i mean um and so that's something to kind of think about for indiana he's definitely interesting in their side of things from that trade um at least the most interesting thing that they got back but yeah the salt the celtics i think made out of that super super well um like i said they improved in the offseason they put themselves in a position in which they can try and fight to get back to the nba finals now the difficult thing comes with age um obviously we're going to be talking about how young this team is, but they got a lot of experience under their belt last year. Um, but Al Horford is getting up there in age. Like I said, Gallinari is up there in age. And so Al Horford was a big contributor throughout the playoffs for them last year. This is the team that played two bigs a lot last year with Al Horford and um, Time Lord on the floor. Um, more than you'd expect, right? And that is because Al Horford can stretch the floor and stuff like that. Um, but I could see his age catching up with them, which could be a detriment to this team, definitely. Now, they have guys like Grant Williams, and obviously you can play Tatum at the four. So, you're not going to be too worried about, like, not having a guy that can play. You're going to have a guy, but you might not be able to play the exact same way you did last year, um, which did lead to your success last year. Um, one other thing I think that's interesting to think about is health. Now, this team was pretty healthy last year, especially in the second half of the season after we watched them take that historic third round from being a below 500 team to making the NBA Finals. Um, but other teams weren't as lucky, right? We saw the Brooklyn Nets have um, injury issues. We saw the Milwaukee Bucks have injury issues um, and plenty and plenty of other teams. And the Boston Celtics were kind of one of those people that did get lucky enough to kind of avoid most, most of that, um, which I think, you know, obviously that's part of just how it goes, right? Not everybody's going to be 100% healthy. Um, if you play what ifs with that, there could be millions of different champions throughout history. Um, and so obviously I'm not going to do that. But what I am saying is like next year, you can't expect those same teams to get injured. Um, so if you go against a fully healthy Milwaukee's Bucks team, can this team really beat them? Probably not. Um, the Milwaukee Bucks put up a huge fight against this team without their second best player. And um, the Milwaukee Bucks are going to be hungry to get back to a championship after um, winning one and then not even being able to make it back to the NBA Finals the following year. Um, the Brooklyn Nets, if they stay intact, are a very, very interesting team, especially making some additions like TJ Warren and Russell Neal throughout the offseason. And we still haven't seen how Ben Simmons looks like next to Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. At this point, this would be their roster, and I don't see Kevin Durant sitting out um, one of his last few prime years that he has in the league in order to force a trade. So if he isn't traded by the start of the season, I expect him to be playing for the team. Um, I know he is supposed to kind of have like this, like, formal like meeting with um like the owner or somebody or the gm of the nets to kind of try and work things out and get on the same page with it all but um i definitely at this point expect him to be on their team to start the season otherwise i think we would have seen a trade um if you are going to acquire him you want him as early as possible so you can integrate him with your team integrate him with your camp um and be on the same page for the start of the season rather than um trying to start all over again 15 games into the season as we saw uh, the Nets do with Harden when they acquired him through trade, right? Um, right kind of as the season had started, in which typically it's just best to get the guy that you want in the offseason, even if you have to pay a little bit more um, for the cohesiveness and for just the um, fact that you're going to have him for the whole season and you can kind of 
you're not working on that chemistry um, part of the way through the season, you get a start before the season even begins, right? Um, so at this point, I don't expect Kevin Durant to be traded, in which I look at his Brooklyn as a major contender if James Harden can get back to form on Philadelphia um, that team can be very dangerous especially with Tyrese Maxey and Tobias Harris as third and fourth options next to two top 10 players in the league if James Harden is playing at his best um, in Joel Embiid and James Harden and you know there's always going to be the Dark Horse Miami Heat we've seen the Atlanta Hawks make steps to get better there's a lot of young teams like the Detroit Pistons like the Orlando Magic trying to make moves um, if you guys didn't see my Detroit Pistons video, make sure you guys go watch that and keep an eye out for a potential Orlando Magic video. Um, small little plug there for me, of course, but, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of talent in the East. It continues to grow more and more talented and, um, slowly work its way from being, um, the Eastern Conference to a very on-par competitive conference with the Western Conference. Now, I think, yes, the West is still better at this point, um, there are more teams than even plan spots that could be playoff caliber teams in the West. But I also think that's just due to the um, saturation of talent within the league that we are kind of blessed with at this point um, in time. And so I think some of that does come to that as well. Um, but the East is definitely um, growing in talent and we're seeing a lot and a lot of teams really kind of try and make pushes forward to um, accelerate their timelines or... Um, put themselves in the best position to try and win basketball games right um i'm definitely forgetting some teams in there as well that i didn't mention um obviously we could see the indiana pacers continue to do something now adding tyrese halliburton into the mix as their guy that they're going to be building around um and all sorts of things throughout the conference um so the boston celtics aren't safe in any regard necessarily now some of those younger teams i listed i think the celtics handle pretty simply in a series um but there are those veteran teams that are coming back and you know have the potential to be just as good if not um clearly better than the celtics and so um i definitely expect the celtics to be players again around trade deadline um i don't think anybody should be off the table other than jason tatum um and jalen brown at this point because unless you're getting kevin Durant back keep the continuity of those two um as we've seen it's worked so far but, well, I'd keep Time Lord off the table, actually. Um, I think he's a defense player that your caliber player. Um, probably more so than Marcus Smart. He probably deserved it, looking back on it. Um, Marcus Smart played phenomenal, but comparatively, I mean, Robert Williams just provided more for this team last year. Um, regardless, I do think there's a lot that you could get from Marcus Smart if you did need to trade him um, come midseason or something like that. So there's definitely assets on this team to make moves. Um, and there's money on this team that you can make it with with an Al Horford contract or combining the likes of, say, a um, Marcus Smart and a Derek White contract. I mean, there's you got you got contracts on this team that you could go out and you can make a big splash if that does if those cards do open up. Um, now, yeah, you don't have the plethora of picks that you used to have as the Celtics were one of those teams that kind of, was kind of loaded when it came to draft capital you know four or five years ago um you're not at that point anymore you've obviously expended and used a lot of that um to get where you are today which is no no issue right you just made the nba finals um but yeah i think i like that this team hasn't stayed stagnant um i like what brad stevens has done as a general manager so far and um i think you know he made a more fluid switch into the front office position than I think a lot of people thought he was going to. So props to him for being able to just go from being a coach to a general manager as quickly as he did and being successful at it, at it as well. Um, and yeah, I'm super interested to see what this team does. I think, like I said, I don't think they'll win the NBA Finals next year. In fact, if I had to make a bet, they're not going to be back in the NBA Finals next year. One of the coolest storylines that could happen would be them versus the Lakers to compete for the most championship rings um in all of basketball obviously long time rivalry you would have the young of the celtics versus the old of the lakers um just com complete polarity in that situation which would be super interesting to watch but i just don't think the celtics at this point um are gonna be able to get back to it are gonna be able to beat some of these teams that um might just want it more especially you know when you look at some of the guys on the other teams yeah you never know if you're gonna get back so if you're the boston celtics Last year could have been the only chance that Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown ever get to win an NBA championship. 
and we could look back on that in 10 to 20 years and be like wow that was the only time that they ever made it right or it couldn't be um but when you look at like the nets or the sixers or the bucks um those guys are all older all the stars on those teams are older um and have less and less time than the boston celtics so they um just by direct nature of that would have a innate stronger drive um to push harder and harder and i think you know if you take the best player on any of those teams it is better than jason tatum i think joel Embiid's better than jason tatum i think Giannis is better than tatum um kevin Durant is better than tatum so if those teams play to their fullest potential there's definite competition for the celtics in which yes the celtics defense showed out last year in the playoffs showed out last year in the regular season um but they're gonna have to do that and more if they want to capitalize on and capitalize and build on what they did last year so super interested to see what they do let me know what you guys think the boston celtics are capable of in this upcoming season um like i said i think they're going to be a, a strong playoff team definitely a second round team they're not going to be an easy out um but i do think um they are going to be an out before they see any western conference opponent so let me know again what you guys think appreciate you guys watching it's been your boy dom and uh yeah we'll see what the celtics do this year but uh i'll catch y'all next time peace out guys